On this episode of Eat Sleep Drive, we are doing some maintenance on my Toyota Land Cruiser. I'm going to show you guys how to grease your drive shaft so you no longer have clunks coming from underneath the vehicle. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Eat Sleep Drive and it's time to do some maintenance on my Toyota Land Cruiser. I have a little bit of clunking uh, on downshifts or when I change from neutral to drive and everything I've read online is it sounds like you need to grease your drive shaft and this is something that's just a maintenance item you should really be doing every time you change the oil. So I'm changing my oil and I'm going to grease the drive shaft now. But I'm not going to do it in this snow because it's really crappy outside. Let's pull it in the garage and then we'll get to it. Now I was just going ahead and jacking this car up because that's what we need to do. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, I want to cover what you're going to need to do this. Uh, certainly you're going to need grease <laughs> to grease your drive shaft. Now Toyota recommends NLGI number two grease. Uh, this is lithium grease and I got this stuff. It's Valvoline Sinpower. It's got Molly in it, so it's supposed to be better for impact type stuff, which is a, this is a good application. So just buy yourself some quality grease. I just picked this up at the local auto parts store. And then you're obviously going to need a grease gun. Uh, this is another thing that I upgraded uh, or that I bought recently from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description and I'll let you guys know at the end of the video how I like it or if I don't like it. But it came highly recommended on the Land Cruiser forums. It seems to be a nice quality uh, piece. Uh, there were some cheap crappy ones at AutoZone, which I wasn't really feeling. This seems a lot uh, better made. So I'll put a link for the description of that below. That's pretty much all you need though, outside of a jack and jack stands to be able to lift the car. I recently did a video reviewing this jack and I'm really impressed with it for the money. My old um, aluminum racing jack that I use for my race cars and stuff isn't going to cut it on the Land Cruiser. So when I bought the Land Cruiser, I had to buy a new jack. So anyway, let's finish getting this car all jacked up and on jack stands, and then I'll show you guys how to grease the drive shaft. So go ahead and jack the car up. I put two jack stands under the rear axle and then two right behind the front wheels on the frame rails. Now before we can get to where we can grease the drive shaft, there is this panel in the way here and there are six 12 millimeter bolts that need to be removed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these. It turns out there were actually eight of them, but no big deal. Get this panel out of the way. Part of the reason that we jacked the car up is because we need to put it in neutral. So I'm just gonna put the ignition to on, put it in neutral, and then also we need to make sure we're in neutral on the transfer case here, which is in the middle. So we do that so we can rotate the drive shaft to get to the fittings that we need to get to. So let me show you guys the fittings that we're going to be greasing today. If you look all the way up here, you can see that little grease fitting, it's a Zerk fitting, and um, it's kind of in the wrong position, right? Well, that's why we put the transmission into neutral so we can easily rotate the shaft. See that? Now, if my camera work is decent, you might be able to see the two. There's one fitting here, and then there's one deep in this yoke. So there's actually six different places that we're going to be applying grease. Um, four, uh, two on each shaft. There's a front drive shaft and a rear drive shaft. Of, uh, there's one on the yoke on both ends. Okay. And then there is this slip joint right here, which you can see uh, moves fore and aft and that is greased right here. So while we're down here, I'm just going to clean these up a little bit with a uh, toothbrush and just try and get some of the mud and dirt off of them so we don't uh, cram that in with all the grease. Now on to loading the grease into the grease gun. The first thing you have to do is pull this plunger back and then you see how there's this little tab here. I just moved it to the side. This will lock into place and then you can remove the main cartridge or the main tube, I should say, from the head. Put that aside. And this is where we're going to be putting the grease tube. 
pop the cap off, and then this the, the end that you popped off goes actually down. And then we pull this tab off. Now we can screw this main tube onto the head. But do not, according to the instructions, don't tighten this fully because we want to compress some air out of here. So with that partially screwed on, not fully seated, we're going to release this catch and it should just hold as is. And you want to push. Now I, I've already used some of this grease, so I pushed in a little bit, but you want to push, I'm like pushing this way to try and get as much air out as possible. And then once you've got, once you've pushed as much as you can and there's no like more air coming out, you just twist this. You see how I rotated this T handle and then this goes in. Okay. With that done, we can finally tighten this tube on fully because we theoretically should have got all the air out. And so let's start pumping and see if we can get some grease to come out now. I used a little bit of this grease for another project, so I had a bunch of air in there. But as you can see, after a few pumps, it's already coming out, squirting out there. So we are ready to go. Grease gun is lo locked and loaded. Now we're back under the car, and I'm just gonna start from the very back of the car. This is the first spider universal joint, and you just push this um, fitting on, okay? And then go ahead and give it a few pumps. And what we should eventually see if we're getting grease to come out is grease to start oozing out of that joint. I didn't fully have it on, seated on there. So it's just oozing out at the Zerk fitting. There we go. See that? All that crap coming out. I'm going to give it a couple pumps. And now we have greased that fitting. I'm going to go ahead and take a paper towel and try and clean up some of this mess because it will fling everywhere. But this is one of the four spider universal joints that you have to do. Now you could do these in any order, but I'm going to go ahead and start from the back and move forward and do all the spider or universal joints. And then now I'll show you guys how to do the slip joint. All right, now on to the slip joints, which is right here. This kind of moves back and forth. And when we put grease in this little nipple right here, it's going to put grease in this cylinder, which is why grease, grease is this fore and aft mo movement. Now, there are a bunch of different schools of thought on this one being that it's different than the spider universal joints. Um, according to the Land Cruiser service manual, which is what I'm going to follow here, and I don't know why you wouldn't follow it, but there are there is a huge debate on the Land Cruiser forums on this. According to the service manual, you should pump this until grease runs around this ring. Now, some people will say you should pump it until you see the shaft move. And you can already see it moving. But I'm of the opinion that we should follow the service manual. Once again, I don't know why you wouldn't. And pump this up a bunch of times, from what I'm told to understand, until the grease flows around that seal. In my case, it took about 50 pumps before I saw any grease at the seal. Okay, we finally have it oozing out of that seal. So once again, you can form your own opinion, do your own research, but the factory service manual tells you to grease it until it comes out that seal, which it has. So now that it's finally come out there, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go do the other one. Okay, now here's the moment of truth. When I used to go into drive, just like that, that's actually a huge difference. There was no clunk. Now, when I was going, going, going from park to drive before 
it would make uh, a big thud. I would, it was audible and I could feel it. Now the other thing, which I'm gonna test now, I'm gonna accelerate and let off and then get on again. Okay, yeah, so definitely a huge improvement. Like that's 95% cured. Basically what was happening was when I would accelerate and let off the gas and then get back on it, there was another thud. So there was definitely like some more or less play in those drive shafts. We have since remedied that situation by lubricating the drive shaft and now it's slick. All right guys, well that's basically all you need to know for greasing your drive shaft on your 100 series Land Cruiser. This really um, is applicable to a bunch of different Toyotas, you know, Forerunners, Sequoias, stuff like that. Uh, they're pretty similar in design and nature. Not the same obviously, but you know, Greasing a fitting is greasing a fitting. So make sure you're doing this on a regular interval. I'm just gonna do it every time I change the oil because that makes sense. Although if I keep doing a lot of water crossings uh, like I did in the fall here, maybe I should do this more often because I think the uh, water obviously washes away the grease or can wash away the grease. So um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say and also give me suggestions for what you would like to see me do uh, future video wise with my Land Cruiser. I always appreciate you guys watching and uh, really value your feedback. If you want to see what I'm up to in between episodes, you can check me out on Instagram at Eat Sleep Drive TV. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. We'll see you next time, guys.